Welcome, dear viewers, to another enlightening episode on Around Us. Today's journey takes us deep into the mysteries of the cosmos, where vast secrets await our curiosity. The universe, an expansive and complex tapestry, holds within it phenomena that challenge our understanding and expand our horizons. As we stand on the brink of cosmic discovery, we are reminded of the humility required to comprehend our place in this grand design. Join us as we traverse these cosmic mysteries together. Around us. How wide is the solar system in light years? A fantastic question that invites us to gauge the vastness of our own cosmic backyard. To address this, we must first understand the concept of the solar system's boundary, which is not as straightforward as one might think. The solar system's outer limits can be determined in several ways, primarily through the influences of the solar wind and the sun's gravitational pull. One method delineates this boundary at the heliopause, where the solar wind, a stream of charged particles emanated by the sun, ceases to push outward against the interstellar medium. This termination shock is located approximately 120 to 130 astronomical units, AU, from the sun, translating to about 0.002 light years. However, this is just the edge of the solar influence, not the full reach of its gravitational domain. A more expansive boandary is proposed by the presence of the Oort cloud a theoretical cloud of icy objects that marks the origin of long-period comets. The Oort cloud is believed to extend from 2,000 to 100,000 AU, or about 1.58 light years, showcasing the gravitational reach of the Sun. Though direct observation of the Oort cloud remains elusive, its existence is supported by the trajectories of comets and the gravitational influences of neighboring stars in the Milky Way itself. This suggests that the solar system's gravitational boundary extends much farther than the heliopause, encompassing a domain nearly 3.16 light years in diameter. Moving to another question, could the solar system, including Earth, eventually be pulled into the supermassive black hole at the center of the Milky Way? This question taps into the dynamics of galactic structures and the life cycle of solar systems. At the heart of our galaxy lies Sagittarius A asterisk, a supermassive black hole with a mass four million times that of the sun. Our solar system orbits the galactic center at a distance of about 27,000 light years, taking approximately 250 million years to complete one orbit. Considering these vast scales, the immediate threat of being consumed by Sagittarius A asterisk seems distant. However, the dynamics of galaxy evolution suggest a more complex scenario. The Milky Way is on a collision course with the Andromeda Galaxy, expected to merge in about 4 billion years. This cosmic event, while dramatic, is unlikely to directly plunge our solar system into the galactic core due to the vast distances between stars. Instead, the merger could redistribute the solar system to a different region of the resulting galaxy, far from the immediate vicinity of the central black hole. Moreover, long before such galactic events could potentially endanger our solar system, the Sun itself will have undergone significant changes. As it exhausts its nuclear fuel, the Sun will expand into a red giant, engulfing the inner planets, including Earth, before settling into its final phase as a white dwarf. This stellar evolution, occurring over the next five billion years, will fundamentally alter the habitability of our solar system, rendering concerns about galactic dynamics moot in the context of human existence. Why are the inner planets of the solar system rocky and small, while the outer planets are gas giants and significantly larger? This question directs us to the early days of our solar system's formation and the processes that sculpted its current layout. The architecture of our solar system is a direct consequence of its formation from a protoplanetary disk around 4.6 billion years ago. During this epoch, temperature gradients within the disk played a pivotal role. Closer to the sun, the intense heat only allowed heavier elements, such as iron and silicon, to condense into solid forms, 
leading to the formation of the rocky terrestrial planets. Further from the sun, cooler temperatures permitted lighter elements, such as hydrogen and helium, and ices to condense, leading to the formation of the gas giants and ice giants. This distribution is further explained by the concept of the frost line or snow line in the protoplanetary disk, which demarcates the region beyond which volatile compounds could condense into solid ice grains. These grains served as building blocks for the cores of the outer planets, allowing them to accumulate substantial gaseous envelopes. This theory is supported by observational data from exoplanetary systems and computational models that simulate the disk's evolution under varying conditions. Final question, why are planetary systems and galaxies disc-shaped rather than spherical? This question touches upon the fundamental principles of angular momentum and the dynamics of rotating systems. The disc shape of planetary systems and galaxies arises from the conservation of angular momentum. As a cloud of gas and dust collapses under gravity to form a star or galaxy, it spins faster due to the conservation of angular momentum similar to a figure skater pulling in their arms. This increasing spin causes the cloud to flatten into a disk. This process is evident in the formation of accretion disks around young stars, where planets form, and in the large-scale structure of spiral galaxies. Galaxies initially form from the gravitational collapse of denser regions within vast cosmic clouds of gas and dark matter. As this material collapses, it begins to spin, flattening into a disk. This disk shape is maintained by the orbital motions of stars and gas within the galaxy, balanced by the gravitational pull toward the center and the centrifugal force due to rotation. Observations of galaxies across the universe, from spirals like our Milky Way to ring galaxies, underscore the influence of angular momentum on cosmic structures. In today's episode on Around Us, we have traversed from the boundaries of our solar system to the fundamental forces sculpting the universe's architecture. We've touched upon the essence of cosmic phenomena, exploring not just the how, but the why of their existence. As we conclude this session, let us remember that our quest for understanding the cosmos is a journey of endless discovery, where each answer leads to new questions. We invite you to continue this journey with us, sharing your curiosity and wonder. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon to stay updated with our explorations into the mysteries around us. Until next time, keep looking up and wondering. Farewell and see you in the next episode of Around Us.